How are you? Guys, I can't I can't make a video if we start the entire first game quad killing them. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Hey guys, and welcome back to another educational video on Oriana early laning phase where we start the game off with a 3v3 fiesta where everyone's dying randomly. Good stuff. Uh, this is a normals game for the express interest of showing you guys how to play Oriana in the laning phase. And we are playing against a melee mid with a item advantage, playing Gallia. Uh, the reason why I started tier in this particular matchup is because they have a Ramus, and I was kind of afraid of getting early ganked. We're playing against almost quadruple tanks, so this is going to be a Leandre's game. And Ionian Lucidity Boots are probably going to be best in slot just because they're going to be building MR naturally with their build paths. But first things first, we kind of just have to understand that the first gank timer for a 3 camp is 220, so we are currently gankable right now by level 3 Ramus. But the goal that I have in mind here is that I want to push the wave in and bounce it back on wave 3, which is this particular wave. So I need to go ahead and use my minion advantage here to get this shoved in so that I can fix the wave state to be on my side. The reason why I want the minions to be on my side of the lane is so that I cannot be gankable. Because right now, I'm overextended, right? Because I'm pushed over the middle part of the map. But I can change that by getting this wave to go under tower and then allowing these minions to push back towards me. So if Ramus is doing a 5 or 6 camp, his first gank timer would be at 3 minutes, assuming that he's finishing his second buff right about now. So, we've accomplished our goal of getting the minion waves under tower. And obviously this game's a little bit awkward just because we started off with this really unfortunate level 1 invade from the enemy team that ended up getting them quite a bit. But wave is now equalized. Ramus, or rather Gallia, will naturally push it towards me. Just because most of his skills are massively AoE along with his auto attack. No information on Ramus yet, so just playing passively on this line defends me from ganks while putting me relatively close to my tower without flash. And we're just going to focus on getting last hits. My goal is basically just a scale. And when possible, I would like to use my Q for Mana Flow Band and or Airing. Just so I can get some value out of my runes. Start stacking up my Mana Flow Band and get some chip damage in. Uh, Galio has access to no potions right now because he burned them all in the level 1 fight. Which means that when we do damage to him, he has no effective way of healing it. So this is a pretty easy way to get some free damage in. And I am running overgrowth this game just for the additional max health. But he just uses E dash, which means he has no way of actually getting close to me outside of taunt. So we get a very, very good trade for us right there. We're still ungankable because we are under our tower, which means there's nothing they can do to touch us. And I would not be surprised if he looked for a teleport play here just because he doesn't really have many options. If my Wukong were looking for a gank right now, this would be a good time since he's overextended for a long time right now. This is also why we do freezes for the most part as control mages. Um, there's a common misconception that freezing is a defensive position. You can be as aggressive as you want with a freeze because they're forced to move into your range, which gives you a massive advantage. But too many people just think that it's only defensive in nature. But right now, we're slow pushing towards the enemy, which means that we are slowly extending into their side of the map, which makes it possible for us to get ganked right now. And as you can see here, we are getting ganked. My priority here is really just to get as much distance. And just go ahead and TP back. So, realistically, the only way that we could avoid this is by putting down Vision before we started slow pushing. And that is what we should have done. Because right now, this kind of makes it a little bit harder for us to play our lane state. Fortunately for us, we do not have teleport. <laughs> now, the good news is the one wave that you want to recall on is the cannon wave. The cannon wave is the best time to leave your lane because it gives you the most amount of time to run back to your lane without losing anything. Because if they want to punish you, they have to kill your 1000 HP cannon, and then this cannon has to take 9 tower shots before it dies to my own turret. So even though they pushed me out of lane, I basically lost nothing for leaving. I wasted Ramus's time, and now I can push the lane back and get my own advantage if I'd like to. 
And this is how you build roam timers the most... These are the most free roam timers just because by the time I get back here, Galio is still going to be in base or coming back, so I can just walk around for 15 seconds, and there's really nothing to do until he gets back or play for plates. So we're going to look bot side here. Unfortunately, we have a shake of support, so I doubt anything's going to happen here, but... We're probably going to burn at least some flashes. They are losing a lot of minions to tower right now, but 300 gold is pretty much always worth it. But yeah, this is the most common gank timer that you'll get, is just being desynced off wave. So if you guys both match TP, or you both match recalls and you get back first, it's pretty much always in your favor. So being the one to initiate the recall is pretty much always better for you. Because if you recall first, they have to fix wave and then leave to match recall, or they just lose off of item at disadvantage. Bad positioning on my part, gonna get some free damage done to me, but... Honestly, it's fine, because now there's nothing he can do to me, so I'm just going to run them down. Because, again, if I see Galio use all of his skills to engage enemy, there's nothing he can do after that. So the worst possible thing you can do is just face tank all that damage and do absolutely nothing back. Because it's only by trading back into him and by creating a situation where he's losing something for that play. Because if I let him do 300 and I do 0 back, he just wins. But if I take 300 and I do 250 back, at least I'm equalizing the trade. Now, Galio's definitely going bot side for an ultimate play, so I'm just going to have to hard shove my lane. And hopefully they get out there, I can play for plate or I can play for reset. Very good disengage, very well done. So, there's no way for me to rotate down just because I don't have enough mana, so we're going to play for one plate. We're going to hard shove this wave, and this entire time that Galio's bot side, he is losing CS which is continuing to build my gold lead. Again, 14 CS is basically equivalent to one kill. So right now, I'm effectively ahead. I'd say about 500 gold in lane just off of being better at CSing, along with my tower play. Now, unfortunately, he's completed the Catalyst, which means he has endless amounts of HP and mana, but I have TP available as well. Again, I'm recalling on Cannon Wave. I've got nothing. I TP first. And we're going to go for Lucidity Boots as well as Lost Chapter here. I'm not going to be building m pin just because I don't have a way to deal with their natural Mar builds. We're going to buy a Pink Ward as well. I'm going to try to pull him back with the R2. Very good gank. So he burned his Flash, and because he's dead right now, I can go ahead and hard shove this. And this is actually a winning play for us, so I'm just going to go ahead and play to maybe intercept some autos here. Very well done. He actually almost killed himself on the Ramish shell. But massive gold lead for us. We're up 900 gold. We have a massive lead for ourselves in the middle lane. Uh, very well played by Wukong. Again, your ultimate will pull people in the direction of the ball. So if I ult in front of him, I can pull him back towards me. If I pull behind him, I can pull him away from me. In that situation, I tried to use my ult as a... A re-engage tool. Now keep in mind that with a thousand gold in my inventory, I am technically not as strong as I should be. So even though, statistically, I should absolutely 1v9 this guy right now. Until I spend that money, the stats aren't effective, so I just need to go ahead and find an opportunity to reset. Um, I'm still up a tremendous amount of money from that first recall, so even though he came back with full resources, it's a still a winning play for me, because I'm ahead in itemization right now. And again, I'm just sitting on so much vision right now that I need to use. But we're playing for a tower dive right now. Very, very good play from Wukong. We're just going to go ahead and disengage. I don't want to risk getting taunted under tower. And we also got the plate as well. So we're in a very awkward situation here where I actually kind of want to force the, uh, the Leandre's angle. Because if I recall right now, I'm going to be 400 gold off. You know what? I think we're just fucked anyways. If I if I stay for this plate, I am just risking everything for absolutely no reason. So we're just going to recall. We're going to pick up a Fiendish Codex along with a Dark Seal. And again, the reason why we're building Leon Juice this game is because it does the most amount of damage over time. And we're playing against a very tanky team. Against tanky teams, games last, or team fights last a lot longer, since they're building a lot of HP. Leandris does bonus damage against 
healthier targets and also does percentage of their health. Galio is rotating again, so we're just going to hard shove mid lane. And again, if people are going to leave your lane and impact the other parts of the map, you have to make sure that they're losing something for doing that. Because if I do absolutely nothing here and Galio walks back, he's going to get all this CS for free. But if I hard shove it and push in the tower, then he's at least losing minions to his own tower. So the goal is to penalize them for making plays like this. If your teammates avoid the play, as well as getting this way pushed in, then you're just... You're getting so much for free right now. Like, I'm 40... I'm a lot of CS up. I'm 44 CS up. I've got three plates. That's pretty much 500 gold from plates alone. And then about 600, 700 gold from minions alone. And I don't really need to worry about getting ganked just because I have a lot of teammates behind me, so I can just keep hard shoving this. I could technically freeze on him just because there's nothing for him to uh, roam to anyways. And he should be fine. Great teleport. Uh-oh. And I have enough for Leandri, so once again, this is technically an overstay. I should have recalled the moment I had the chance. So I'm going to get this wave pushed in, and we're going to go and recall. And hopefully the next wave is cannon wave, so that way even if he tries to punish me, I don't lose anything it is. Keep in mind, the longer the game goes, these cannons are going to die a lot faster just because people have more items, more damage. But we're looking very, very strong right now. Leandre's spike is extremely huge against this team composition because we'll just be penetrating. Not penetrating, but we'll be burning off a lot of that extra HP that they have from items. But heading back in the mid lane, again, he's not really able to deny me anything, so I lost pretty much one minion for recalling. This is why I'm able to maintain my CS lead, is that every time that you see me recalling, I'm doing it when I'm not going to lose anything for leaving. And then whenever he makes a mistake, I punish him by pushing the minion wave in. The amount of times I've forced Galio to miss CS because he's gone to another lane or because he's died or he's walked away is a lot, because I know what to punish. So here, Ramus is bottom. I can technically just look to trade as much as I want onto Galio. I have information to work with because we know exactly where his teammates are. And we'll just go for an extended combo here. And there's no way I get punished for this because there's nobody in the area that can stop me from doing this. With Ramus showing on the map, I can play as, as aggressive as I want. So we're going to take this tower. I could technically look for a roam in the bot side. I could look for a roam in the top as well. And I think we're going to bail out the Fiora here. There's a chance that she actually just kills both of us because, you know, Lowey's a fun champion. Look at that. Uh, it's better for me to run from behind just because I'm cutting off her escape route. Because if I run for try, she can just run this way. All we need to do is avoid her E and we technically win, which we've accomplished. And I'm pretty sure we also kill Galio if we play this correctly, so we just need to keep playing for space. He's already engaged with all his skills, so he has nothing to actually keep going with, so we're just going to turn around on him after he's committed everything. And he actually almost, he did get me, well played. I actually missed my Q. Very well done by him. We gave him that opportunity because we tethered incorrectly and we we're being a little bit BM with our skills. If we just used everything, he would not have give, gotten that chance. And it's never good to die, especially with shutdowns because you're giving them a way back into the game. Uh, free TP angle, we're gonna look for TP here. And as long as I hold on to my ult, they can't flash it, so we're just going to keep playing for as long as we can. Ooh, I'm so bad. <laughs> I rushed it. Great shake, OR. That was well done. Alright, we have enough for Archangels. We just reset back in the mid lane here. When they get this tower, we're going to allow our bot lane to go mid lane so that they can impact these neutral objectives like Rift Herald and Dragon, which is always really fantastic for us. 
And we're just going to go and match topside right now, or I could just clear out this mid wave. It's probably better for me to grab CS since this play is almost over. Because if nothing happens here, I am just like hemorrhaging money. But if I do get something over here, it's worth it for me. I think Ram is probably recalling. Oh, she, he died. It's actually not bad. Oh my goodness, it's another 15 surrender. 